Hello everyone, welcome to Allen Digital and today we are going to learn about how to find limits of composite functions. See, rather than our usual standard functions, we are asked to find the limits of multiple functions combined, right? Like combined as a product, combined as exponents, okay, sum, division and all of that of different different functions combined together. But the thing is, if we need to find the limit of composite functions, it's a little bit different. Okay, so for understanding that, we need to understand what composite functions are. Okay, fine. So composite functions, basically, when output of one function acts as input for another function, we get a composite function. Like in this case, we have two functions f and g. f is defined from a to b and g is defined from b to c. And we are defining g of fx as f inside g. All right, so the scenario is something like this. Now understand that the output of this function f is acting as an input of this function g. That means the range of this f must be a subset of domain of g. Only then this f of g can run smoothly. Getting it? All right, so let me take an example for that. Suppose uh, I have fx as root x. The domain is from 0 to infinity, the range is also from 0 to infinity, right? And then I have gx as sin x, the domain is r and the range is from minus 1 to 1, right? Sin x is there. Now, if I define g of fx, huh, it's a perfectly alright thing to do because the domain, uh, the range of this f, right, is 0 to infinity and g is accepting all the values. So, it's perfectly alright to write this. But when I write f of gx, right, the range of g is from minus 1 to 1. But f is not accepting the negative values. This creates a problem here. So I can't write f of g directly from this set of domain and range. I'll have to either redefine it, I'll have to constrict, constrict the domain of this g, then I'll be able to do that. Getting it? So this is the idea. All right, so now if we have a proper understanding of what composite functions are, we can look into how to find the limit of these. So limits of a composite function. Hmm. <clears throat> if we are finding limit x tending to a f of gx, I can write it as f of limit x tending to a gx only when fx is continuous at that particular value. All right. Let me explain that with an, with an example. Limit x tending to 0 e to the power sin x by x. Now the thing is, for x tending to 0 sin x by x, the value is 1 and e is continuous at 1. So it's perfectly alright thing to do to write it as e to the power limit x tending to 0 sin x by x. Okay that is going to give me the value e to the power 1, which will be the value of this limit. Alright. But if I do the same thing for limit x tending to 0 sin x by x, huh? limit x tending to 0 sin x by x inside a box function, which is the greatest integer function, is a problematic thing because for x tending to 0 sin x by x, the value is 1 and the greatest integer function is discontinuous at every integer, right? So, not a very wise decision to write it as the box of limit x tending to 0 sin x by x. Because if you do that, you'll write the value as 1, right? The thing inside the box, the, the value of the limit is an absolute value, which is 1. So, you'll write the value as 1. But in fact, sin x is less than x, right? That means sin x by x is a value which is less than 1. So what we are evaluating actually here is box of something 1 minus h, right? And the value will be 0, alright? So your answer would have been wrong. You would have written 1, but the answer is actually 0. Okay, so this what we need to take care of. That if it is a discontinuous function at that particular value m, Okay, we can't evaluate it by sending the limit inside the function. Then we'll have to go with our basics, right? 
finding out the left hand limit, the right hand limit and checking whether they both are coming out to be equal or not. All right. Okay. Now let's see how to find the limit of a piecewise composite function. Okay. So for piecewise composite function, we don't always have to find out the whole composite of that piecewise function. Okay. We can just do it uh, by finding out the value at that particular point. Okay. We can find out the left hand limit and the right hand limit and that particular point and check whether they are coming out to be equal or not. But what do we need to take care of? That the function is continuous at that point or not. The outside function is continuous at that point or not. All right. Okay. So let me take an example for that. Hmm. Okay. Let's see how to find limits of a piecewise composite function. So while finding out limits of piecewise composite functions, we don't always have to evaluate the whole composite function. We can just find out the left hand limit and the right hand limit at that particular point and just see whether it is coming out to be equal or not. All right. Let me explain that with an, with a, with an example. All right. Okay. So I have a function fx which is defined as sin x for all the integers and 0 for not integers and x square plus 4 for x not equal to 0 and 2, 4 for x equal to 0 and 5 for x is equal to 2. I need to find out limit x tending to 0 f of gx. Now, if I evaluate limit x tending to 0 gx, huh, I'll do LHL and RHL. So I'll have for LHL, I'll have minus h square plus 4, okay, which is coming out to be 4 and h square plus 4 as the right hand limit, which is also coming out to be 4. So LHL is equal to RHL here right, which is equal to 4. Now, if you evaluate f of g of x, which is 4, you'll say that the value is sine 4. But there's a problem here. When we found out that the limit is 4 for x tending to 0 gx, this value is an integer and my function fx is discontinuous at all integers. So, when I did this, what I actually did was, I sent that limit inside this function fx. I was writing f of limit x tending to 0 gx, right? Whereas the function f was discontinuous at that point. What I actually need to do here is evaluate the RHL and the LHL of the whole function. See, when I did that, g of 0 plus h will be f of h square plus 4, right, here from h square plus 4 and the LHL will be 0 minus h which is minus h square plus 4. Now think about it, both of these values h square plus 4 and h square minus 4, h square plus 4 and again this is also h square plus 4, they are not integers, they both are not integers. So I will be actually using this arm for the function fx and the value of this limit would be 0. Okay, my right hand limit is also approaching towards 0 and my left hand limit is also approaching towards 0. Fine. So, 0 will be the answer of this question. Let's see this with another example. The graph of fx is shown to me and I need to evaluate limit x tending to 0 f of fx. Alright. So, let's see. If I find out limit x tending to 0 f of x, huh, just fx. For that, I'll be doing the LHL and the RHL. So, LHL. Okay. The left hand limit of x tending to 0 fx is going towards 2 and the right hand limit is also 2. So, LHL is 2, the RHL is 2, right. So, I should be writing f of limit x tending to 0 f of f of x as f2, right? And the value of f2 is 1. But there is a problem here. When I did that, I understood that the limit inside is approaching towards 2. And at 2, the function is discontinuous. Look, 
at 2 the function is discontinuous. So what I did, I actually can't do that. All right. What I actually need to do here is evaluate the limit as a whole. I'll do limit h tending to 0. Huh, this is my LHL. Limit h tending to 0 f of f 0 minus h. Okay. Right. So for f of 0 minus h, see what is happening. 0 minus h, the value is some 2 minus h. Okay. So I'll write it as 2 minus h. Huh, f of 2 minus h. And when I'm evaluating the right hand limit, it will be limit h tending to 0 f of f 0 plus h. See what is happening at 0 plus h. 0 plus h, the value is still some 2 minus h. So it will be f of 2 minus h. Now, limit x tending h tending to 0 f of 2 minus h will be somewhere over here. And both of these arms, the left hand limit and the right hand limit, both are tending towards the value 2 rather than 1. So, the answer for this would be 2, right? The left hand limit is approaching towards 2, the right hand limit is also approaching towards 2. So, the answer won't be 1, it would be 2. All right. So, I hope you understand how to deal with composite functions now, right? This is the idea that if the function is continuous, you can, if the outside function is continuous, you can send the limit inside and then evaluate it, not an issue. But if it is discontinuous at that point, you'll have to take the individual arms of left hand limit and the right hand limit and then evaluate the limit. All right. Thank you so much, everyone.